React India. Hi everyone, I'm Apoorva Shrivastav and I'm a senior engineer at Publicis Sapien. And fun fact about me, I love coffee. For me, coffee is hope and it gets me through those early mornings and those long meetings. And when I heard about a new place that opened up and it was getting famous for its rich aroma coffee, uh, I got excited. And going back to work after a long weekend is really tough. And I thought, yeah, I could use some strong coffee. So I went there for a, a quick cup of coffee and placed my order. And just as I was about to sit down, I get this notification on my phone which says, Sprint planning meeting in 20 minutes. Now I am getting anxious, more and more anxious, and every passing minute is feeling like an hour. But there's still no, uh, you know, I don't see my coffee coming anywhere near, and slowly and steadily I start losing my patience. And that's when I remember that this is not the first time my patience is getting tested. And anyone who has done this before will relate to this, you know, if you have tried to book a Tatkal train ticket on a government website, right? Nothing can test your patience like that. So I thought to myself, yeah, if I could make through that, I can make through this. So as I was eagerly waiting for my order to come, and more and more time went away, with just five minutes to spare, I started losing hope. And with a heavy heart, I finally decided to leave without having my coffee. Similarly, in the digital world, people hear about your products or your services, and they're excited to explore, right? But there is a very crucial factor at play here, which is time. And longer loading times can have the same effect as a slower coffee service at the cafe. It can lead to a bad user experience. And however good your product or your service is, user cannot use it. And it ultimately leads to what we call as a bounce rate, wherein the visitor visits your website, but leaves without interacting with any of the content. And in addition to losing potential customers, it can also affect your rankings because uh, engines like Google take into account user engagement. And a higher bounce rate can indicate that you are not providing a good user experience. So it becomes very important for us to optimize our applications for faster load times so that the user can have a smooth experience and they can actually go and explore the services and the products that are uh, provided. Now, WebAssembly, also known as WASM, uh, first came out in 2017. And it came as an alternative to JavaScript on browsers. How many of you know what WebAssembly is? OK, quite a few. So all those who don't know it, it's a compilation target that uh, compiles the code into a binary uh, WASM file, and which, is faster, which runs faster on your browser. And uh, it is faster because it is pre-optimized, unlike JS, which uh, does optimization at runtime. Uh, and it is also a smaller size, which uh, helps in uh, faster load times and better web experience. And WASM uh, was not just a tool. It was not just another tool. It came as a hope for the developers uh, that they can get rid of that sluggishness with the web pages and web browsers. It offered speed, performance, um, optimization, portability, and it was also polyglot. So with all of these offerings, there was a you know, wave of excitement that surrounded WebAssembly. And speculation also led to believe that uh, it can replace, completely replace JavaScript. You know? But despite having all those promising aspects, there were certain challenges that were faced during its initial years, like a uh, smaller developer community, uh, poor support for older browser versions, poor support for mobile, app, uh, mobile platforms. And uh, it didn't offer much for existing applications that were written in JavaScript. So in the light of all of these challenges, WASM remained a tool that only brought the desktop applications to the web and failed to get adopted as widely as it was speculated. But hope is a good thing, and no good thing ever dies. So holding on to that hope, we moved on to other ways to uh, optimize our loading time. And one of the major challenges that we face while optimizing our web applications for faster loading time is a large JS file. And when we do uh, traditional client-side rendering, a large JS file can make our application look something like this. 
and this extended loading state is because your JavaScript is getting executed and the HTML is get, getting generated by the browser at runtime. So if you move that HTML generation part to the server, now we have a node runtime that works, executes to JS, and returns a HTML string to your client browser. Also, in addition to faster initial loading time, because we have the compute power and pre-generated HTML, server-side also helps with the SEO. But there's a challenge with SSR that if your origin server is physically located far away from the end user, it can lead to latency in the loading of the web page. So something immediately comes to your mind, right? Why can't we do the same process near to the user? And that's where the cloud comes in. So you render your application on the cloud, also known as the edge, as it is closer to the user. And we get the compute power of the server and the increased speed due to the physical proximity of the cloud, right? Best of the both worlds. Wish it were that easy. Because when we talk about edge, it also comes with its own set of challenges. And one of the significant challenge is the problem of cold start or cold boot. Now, what do we mean by that? A cold start occurs when you handle a new incoming request, so you in initialize a new instance to handle it. And since the serverless functions on the cloud are stateless, the execution environment often gets uh, initialized from the scratch, which uh, adds on to the delay in responding of the user request. And this happens because the traditional node runtime on the edge is both sizable and has uh, you know, uh, 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 a large uh, build time. When we talk about the image size, uh, Node Alpine, which is the most commonly used one, it, it's about 300 MB. And the cold start is somewhat about 700 MS, which is uh, slow because the V8 has just-in-time compiler, which uh, improves the efficiency of the application over time, but it comes with a cost. It increases the memory usage of the application and makes it slower to load. So to cater to this problem of cold start, developers thought of a solution of keeping a few of the instances on the cloud always up and running. While it helped with the time, right, but it grew expensive very quickly especially when we talk about uh, large-scale operations like e-commerce websites, wherein you have to deliver content to a wider audience and have to uh, render on mul in multiple regions. So keeping multiple instances up and ri running all the time adds to that hefty bill. So because of all these challenges, ESR struggled to get that wide, uh, wide adoption, and most of the developers moved back to SSR. Now, we have Wasm and Edge, who would fail to steal the limelight alone, right? But we do know that they have great potential and offerings. So holding on to that hope, I kept on searching and found out that a bunch of amazing people brought them together, teamed them up, and made Wasm Edge. But you know what really made me happy? was when I saw those three magical words. It supports JS. And just like any other JavaScript developer, I went straight for it. But what exactly is Wasm Edge? So Wasm Edge is a runtime that brings WebAssembly from the browser onto the server side. And at the core of Wasm Edge, we have Wasm Edge Quick JS, JS uh, uh, engine. And it also supports a WebAssembly system interface, WASI, which uh, helps to uh, efficiently communicate with any of the host system. And it helps to make Wasm Edge a uh, platform independent. Also, uh, how is Wasm Edge different from Node.js runtime, right? So unlike V8, QuickJS does not have a just-in-time compiler. Also, running V8 on a cloud-native environment requires a whole stack of software, which includes your Linux container, your guest OS, Node, and V8, which is pretty heavy when compared to a simpler QuickJS and Wasm Edge runtime, which is a secure container in itself. So all of this results in Wasm Edge having a smaller footprint, having a 
lesser load time, and it is optimized for cloud native environment or the edge. So let us see how we can use to render our applications on the edge using Wasm Edge. So for the initial setup, we uh, install Wasm Edge and Rust, and we clone the QuickJS repository and copy the module folders into our working directory and generate the QuickJS Wasm using uh, Rust target. For the application, we have a simple React application for which we define a server in which we initially set up a WASI TCP server instance, which listens to the port for the user request and forwards it to the client. The client creates an instance of HTTP WASI request, and this request gets handled by executing the JS and returning the HTML string as a response. And for the client, we hydrate the root node so that uh, React can attach itself to the HTML that it got from the server, and then uh, get the uh, control of the DOM inside it. And finally, for running the application, we first build the React application. We build the server using Webpack or Rollup configuration. And we run the server in the was imagine quick time, uh, quick JS uh, runtime. And now, when the Edge server receives a request, it returns static HTML to the client browser, which renders the HTML and downloads the JS. And it hydrates the HTML with the uh, JS using the client JS file that we just configured. And finally, we have an interactive React application up and running. So coming back to the issue of cold start with ESR, with Wasm Edge, we see a reduction of 50%. And when it comes to image size, Wasm Edge image size is uh, about 2.5 to 3 times smaller than the Node.js. Yes. But what is a smaller image size? Like, how does it benefit us, right? So a smaller image size means that it is a smaller loading time of image on the cloud, and it saves cost. And when we translate the size to cost, it can uh, decrease by over 70% on monthly cost on the clouds, which is quite saving, right? Also, when talking about time to first byte, Wasm is slower than Node.js. And I think many of you must have guessed it, because it does not have a just-in-time compiler. But it can be optimized by compiling it ahead of time. And how do we do that? We compile the QuickJS Wasm binary using Wasm Edge, which adds a native uh, code native um, uh, section which is native to your machine, which adds to the performance of your JS engine. And now, after the ahead of time compilation, we get a comparable TTFB for both the runtimes. Also, when compared to traditional SSR, Wasm Edge is faster by 35%, which positively impacts your SEO and user engagement. ESR, when compared to SSR, can also help to offload the load on your origin server and help reduce cost in the data transfer. And this cost effectiveness can be useful for heavy traffic and uh, geographically dispersed use cases. Wasm Edge is also open container initiative compliant container. That means that its container images are versatile and can be used for various use cases. It also supports resource isolation. And finally, since it does not have just-in-time compiler, which has a significant attack surface and needs a significant efforts to run securely on a public cloud environment, it provides enhanced security. So we saw that uh, in addition to a smaller image size and comparable TTF via smaller cold start, it also provides us with a standardized container with enhanced security. And you can also use Wasm Edge to run Kubernetes uh, for deploying your micro front ends. So all in all, Wasm Edge has a lot to offer and can help us with those high performance with low resource utilization. And if you also saw potential in it, you can go ahead and start exploring it. Here is the QR code for the implementation. And it also has resources for you to get started off with Wasm Edge. Wait, guys, there's more. <laughs> so
So, what about production? No, when it comes to production, there is still a lot that can be done in sense of optimization and making uh, WASM Edge ready so that the applications can be said like it's production ready, right? But unlike the initial years of WASM, now we have a much bigger community that is actively working on it. And hopefully, very soon, we'll be able to use this amazing tool on our application on production, which can help us breaking out of the prison of the slow web performance, bringing hope and speed to our browsers one byte at a time. And with that, I thank you all and have a awesome weekend. Thank you.